Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And the most recent release of the patch 10.2 is filled with so much content. From the new open world activities found within the zone of the Emerald Dream, to the new endgame activities with a brand new Emergence of Raid, a whole new set of Mythic Plus dungeons and an entirely new season of Rated PvP. Not only do we get a new set of content and activities to participate in, but we also get a ton of new collectibles to obtain as well from new unique looking class tier sets, as well as a lot of other cosmetic items, and even unique druid animal shapes which we've been able to recently cover on this channel. I actually had such a good time putting that video together and I wanted to do something similar yet again, by going over some of the more collectibles that you can obtain within the patch 10.2. So today I've put together this guide on how to obtain all of the new rideable mounts within the content update of the patch 10.2. But right before we get into this new guide video, most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight 10.2 or any of the future updates going forward. First of all, let's go over two of the easiest dragon riding mounts that you can obtain as part of the patch 10.2. The first of which is a Flourishing Whimsdrake, which is a Fey Dragon mount. This one is easily unlocked by completing some of the very first early story questlines as soon as you step your foot into the new zone of the Emerald Dream. As its name suggests, the customization options for this mount are whimsical and resemble that of the easily recognizable Fey Dragons, which can be found throughout the open world outside of the Dragon Isles. The next dragon riding mount is the Grotto Netherring Drake, which some of you might have already unlocked previously through one of the monthly rewards from the trading post. But those of you that haven't will be able to get your second chance to unlock it as of this week. And all you have to do is complete a new story quest chain that's available from Rathian within the new player hub of the Emerald Dream, which awards you with the Grotto Netherwing Drake at the end of the quest chain. And very similar to the Netherwings found within the old Shadowman Valley of the TBC era, these Grotto Netherwing Drakes have some of the more unique customizations. Everything from new fins, horns, eye customizations, and even glowing body markings. Then we have a variety of mount rewards that can be obtained directly from the new zone of the Emerald Dream. Starting with the easiest Emerald Dream bounty mount of the Winter Night Dream Saber. This mount is one of the easier ones to farm and can drop from a variety of different seed bounties, whether you are planting or nourishing common seeds, rare seeds and even gigantic epic seeds. Out of all the mounts that drop from emerald bounties, this one is the most common one that I've seen so far. Next we have some of the more rare seed bloom mounts, which can be awarded within the gigantic dream seed bounties, which requires you to either plant a gigantic dream seed or help another player nourish one. Any amount of contribution helps you get a chance at that mount, though this chance increases slightly the more resources are contributed towards that seed's full bloom. And every single one of the gigantic dream seed bounties has a chance to award a variety of mounts, from two types of dream stags, two types of dream sabers, or two types of dream talents. And like I said, every single one of these gigantic seed bounties only gives you a small chance to RNG drop any of these mounts. However, these mounts also do come with some RNG protection, as every one of these mounts can also be bought directly from Talia Whisperbloom, located in the main player hub of the Emerald Dream for a single Seed Bloom currency. Every reset, Talisa will have a weekly quest for you to plan 5 Dream Seeds around the Emerald Dream, which awards you gear as well as a variety of other endgame resources as well as one single Seed Bloom. That seed bloom can then be used to purchase some of the transmog gear within the open world of the Emerald Dream, but can also be used to purchase some of the mounts obtainable from the gigantic seed bounties. However, before you can purchase these mounts directly, you will first need to reach Renown 18 with the newest faction of the Dream Wardens. However, these are not the only mount rewards that you can obtain by progressing your Renown with the newest Dream Wardens faction as reaching Renown 17 with that faction allows you to purchase two easy mounts directly for some Dragon Isles supplies, which gives you yet another goal that you can actually work towards over the next few weeks. 
And if you're a big fan of earning mounts but putting time into specific content within the open world instead of dealing with random drop rates, then you could always start working towards a mount that is awarded from a long questline of A Little Hope is Never Without Worth, which is a set of daily activities that you will need to do for the next 23 days in order to obtain a unique Dream Talon mount. And to start your 23 day journey, you will need to find a flower that's located very close to the main player hub of the Emerald Dream. First, you'll need to put out the flames of this flower, then interact with it to turn it into a sprout and do a quest to give it some water. Afterwards, you'll be sent to Professor Ash within the Emerald Dream, where there you'll be able to complete a series of daily quests that eventually awards you a unique Dream Talon mount. And as you complete tasks all within the Emerald Dream, you'll be able to earn a new currency of Dream Infusion which can be used to turn some of your existing obtainable mounts into dream versions of those mounts. Dream infusion mounts are sold by Eliana, which is found in the main encampment area of the Emerald Dream. And you earn dream infusion currency by completing all forms of open world tasks, from planting dream seeds as well as nourishing them, completing side quests as well as the main story quests, interacting with various weekly activities, looting treasures, slaying rares, and just about everything you do within the Emerald Dream awards you a little bit of Dream Infusion progress. And once you collect enough progress, you can obtain a Dream Infusion mount, which will require for you to already have a version of that mount ahead of time. So if you've previously obtained an Otuk, which are a common reward obtained from the Iskara Tuskar, or a Shale Wing, which are obtainable from the Zone of Zeralak Caverns added in the patch 10.1 or a mammoth which can be obtained from a variety of reputations and open world content, salamander mounts which are common within the zone of the Forgotten Reach, or any of the newer emerald dream mounts like the dream stags or the dream talents. Only then will you be able to obtain a dream version of any of these mounts, which may even give some of you a reason to go back to some of the older content of Dragonflight that's still available for you to currently interact with from before the launch of the patch 10.2. Next, we have a variety of mounts that you can obtain from the end game content, starting with dungeons. First of all, we have a brand new seasonal Keystone Master mount, which is obtainable by earning the Keystone Master achievement, which requires you to obtain a score of 2000 and above within Mythic Plus dungeons, which you earn by completing and pushing all of your Mythic Plus dungeons to a higher level. From the newest rate of Emergisol, we have two mount options, like the Mythic Farak mount, which is quite difficult to earn. However, the glory of the Dream Raid mount is a lot more doable, which requires you to complete a variety of different achievements within the newest raid on the difficulty of normal or higher, which is actually quite doable since the normal version of the raid isn't all that difficult once you get yourself a little bit of gear. Then we have a new Owl Bear mount, which is available for either the faction of the Alliance or Horde, and you can earn these mounts by participating in rated PvP content, by winning PvP matches while at least above the rating of 1000. But if you love PvP in Dragonflight and want a real challenge, then you can always set your sights on the newest Gladiator mount as well. Lastly, we have some new Farak mounts added with a patch 10.2 which can be obtained by Slain Farak, which is the final boss of the newest raid tier of Emergisol. First, we have the embodiment of the Blazon Protojake version, which has a low chance to drop by Slain Farak on any of the difficulties of Elephar, Normal or Heroic, but a guaranteed drop chance from the difficulty of Mythic. But Slain Farak on Heroic difficulty allows you to unlock the embodiment of the Shadowflame Protojake version which is part of the Ahead of the Curve mount achievement that's available towards the end of every single expansion. You'll get the quest to earn this mount after slaying Farak on Heroic difficulty, which may take some time, a good raid group, and some coordination in order to topple the final raid boss. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel, probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.